Okay, here's a quick video to understand the input charging capabilities of this 18650 do-it-yourself power bank. And it's got a couple options for inputs. It's got USB-C, USB micro, and also Apple Lightning. So I wanna see specifically what the power uh, delivery options are and, and what uh, levels of charging it negotiates with uh, power delivery compatible devices. I've just got a few cells in here right now so that I can easily manipulate the state of charge up and down and currently it's at 68%. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just use this. Uh, this is the cable I use to charge my laptop. It's uh, known to support um, uh, power delivery. So I'll plug this USB-C cable into the, um, the USB-C port on the 18650 power bank, and sure enough, it changes to uh, show fast input charging. So we know that it is doing uh, fast charging there, but let's find out exactly what that means because I don't know what the wattage is on that. So to do that, I'm gonna actually use this meter that is, uh, it's just a pass-through, it's configured for pass-through, meaning it's not triggering or anything, it's not doing any power delivery negotiation, it's merely reading what's flowing through it. And on the other side, I've got this CalDigit uh, Thunderbolt 4 cable, it's actually a pretty high quality cable, so that shouldn't influence things. And I'm going to plug that into the power bank. And with that plugged in, there we go, we see that the USB-C power delivery power source that I've got here has negotiated with the power bank for uh, power delivery from, from the power source into the, into the power bank at 12 volts and about 1.5 amps, so that's almost 18 watts of um, power that this power bank is accepting. So now uh, let's try another power source um, we'll plug that back in. I want to test uh, power input from a uh, Apple wall charger. So let's plug in another USB-C to USB-C cable here and we'll see what power is um, negotiated from an Apple wall, ch wall charger. Again, through the meter here. Okay, let's see what happens. And nothing is happening. I think I know why. Sometimes this meter needs me to flip the input cable. And the reason um, I believe is because it provides other test functions that require it to not do an auto negotiation of the, uh, the direction of the cable. So that's a limitation of the meter, not of the power bank. So once I flip that cable, uh, sure enough, it's doing power delivery as well. But here using the Apple wall charger as the power delivery source, uh, it is negotiated with the power bank a 9 volt level of power delivery charging and uh, the wattage is similar but higher current because of the lower voltage. So we're still at about 17 and a half watts. So that's nice that it will um, charge at both at 9 volts as well as 12 volts uh, from various power delivery capable power sources. Now one other thing that I can do here is try out uh, power delivery over lightning using this USB-C to lightning cable. So I'll plug that into my meter and then plug it into the power bank. And again, we see that power delivery was negotiated at uh, the nine volt um, power delivery level and wattage is similar. It's down maybe slightly to 17 watts and uh, charging away there. We can also test that with uh, my original power source. Let's go back to here and see what we get over lightning using the uh, USB-C power source that I usually use to uh, charge my computer through USB-C. And so this power source is negotiating the 12 volt level. Uh, the wattage is actually down a little bit. Um, so further evidence that whether you're using nine volt or 12 volt power delivery, the uh, the wattage uh, delivered to this power bank is not so different, but it is a little bit lower here over lightning versus uh, purely USB-C. What gets interesting is when you plug in this power bank, uh, when you try to use it with another device, which is it has a dual roll USB-C port. The USB-C port on the power bank is a dual roll port. It can be an input or an output. And uh, the same is found like on my laptop excuse me, my laptop here. So if I use my Thunderbolt 4 cable, which is just a, a fancy USB-C cable, if I plug these two together, two USB-C dual roll ports, 
Uh, it's not always obvious to me which uh, direction power should flow, but I can say from testing this combination, power flow always does happen to go from the uh, power bank to the laptop. And I can, um, I can run that through the meter just to double check what's going on here. So let me configure that. I'll put my USB-C to USB-C cable into the meter here. And then connect the output of the meter, excuse me, while I get this right. The output of the meter connected to my laptop. Let's see what happens. Oh, let's, uh, let's unplug and then plug back into the laptop. So that's the last connection that's made. No, this must be another situation where I need to flip the cable. Sorry about that. I can assure you that it's a situation that um, is a, it's a consequence of the meter and how it works, not of uh, the power bank. But once I got the cables right, we see that the power bank is charging my laptop at oh, over 19 watts. So it's chosen the 12 volt uh, power delivery option at uh, just about 1.6 amps and delivering a nice healthy charge to my laptop for a power bank. These days, uh, you know, close to a 20 watt charge, obviously nothing like the 140 watts that's available from the Apple wall charger, but um, still plenty and uh, quite a bit more than uh, previous five volt only power banks were able to provide. Every combination that I've tried with USB-C, like I mentioned, um, will flow from this power bank to my laptop. Uh, there is a way, however, to reverse that by using the lightning cable. Of course, the lightning cable is not a, does, you know, the lightning connector is not a dual roll port. It's much closer to, say, USB micro, where this is, uh, the power always flows out of this cable. It never flows into it. So if I use the USB-C to, US, excuse me, USB-C to lightning cable, I can plug that in my meter. So I've got power coming from the laptop to the meter and onward to the power bank over lightning. Now what happens is we see that uh, the, the power bank is saying it's getting input. So it's charging from the laptop. It even says fast. What's strange about that is that uh, the, the rate of power is only uh, about 7.6 watts here and it's only at the five volt charging level. Now that's surprising because I would expect the laptop to charge um, at a fast rate than that, and I also wouldn't expect uh, five volt charging to be considered fast, but that's what I see when I plug in the laptop through lightning. Another situation is going from power bank to power bank. Uh, in this case, both of the ports are, are kind of equals. They're both dual roll USB-C ports on a power bank. And so I'll just start with my USB-C cable and plug it into the 18650 power bank. And then this is an EcoFlow Riverbank. It also has USB-C power delivery ports on it. So I'll just plug USB-C to USB-C and see what happens. And we see that the power bank, the 18650 power bank is charging the EcoFlow power bank. Uh, it says it's 17 watts according to the EcoFlow power bank. So similar to plugging into the laptop, power wants to flow out of this 18650 power bank and into something else. Let's test that with my meter just to see what the power flows really are. So I'll plug in the meter in line using the two USB-C to USB-C cables and tip this up. Okay, so the difference is we've negotiated the, uh, the nine volt uh, charging level in this case, over 18 watts, 18 and a half watts out of the 18650 power bank into the EcoFlow power bank, and it's recording it as 17 watts of input, input, so there may be a little bit of drop or uh, a little bit of imprecision somewhere along the way, but certainly power flowing out at a good rate from the 18650 power bank to another power bank. Let's try the same trick again where we try to get power to flow from the, uh, the other direction, in, in other words, power to flow into the 18650 power bank using power delivery. And to achieve that, we use a lightning cable. So there we go. The EcoFlow River is saying that it's outputting eight watts. That there we go. It updated itself. It's actually updated. It's updated to 14 watts of output. That agrees with the meter, which is showing that it shows the uh, nine volt charging level and 14 watts. And the power bank is sure enough showing power input, fast input.
Something else to be aware of is that if you're charging the power bank via a lightning cable from a power delivery capable power supply, the screen will show fast input and that's confirmed by the meter here. But then if you go to also charge something off of the power bank at the same time via the USB-C port, such as this other power bank, the screen will still say fast in and out. However, the device that's being charged, it's this one's showing it's only getting four watts. And at the same time, the formerly fast input charge has dropped to about five volts and just over five watts. So instead of having fast input and fast output, it's actually dropped to some sort of compatible level that's both around five volts, five watts. If you remove the other device that you were trying to charge and, and just leave the lightning cable plugged in, you can see that the power bank renegotiates its input charge with the charger and goes back up to a fast charge speed. If you do the reverse, where you've got an input in, output plugged in, and you then unplug the input, you'll find that the output does shoot up to the high speed level that you're expecting. So we can do fast charging in or fast charging out, but if you try to do both at the same time, you're probably going to slow down both of them. So that's a couple different ways that this uh, 18650 do-it-yourself power bank can be used. Um, we've shown that the lightning port is capable of input at up to 12 volts power delivery, but it's always an input as lightning is designed. And we've shown that the USB-C port is functioning as a dual role port, just like you would have on the side of a laptop or you know on, on other power banks. Power can flow either direction. In my limited testing, the power always flows out of the 18650 power bank using USB-C to another dual role USB-C port. If you want to force power into the 18650 power bank, the trick is to use a USB-C to lightning cable. And given the nature of the lightning plug, which is not a dual role plug, that will force power to flow into the uh, power bank. So hopefully that was helpful to others that are using this power bank and curious about how power delivery works and at what levels. Thanks for watching.